Hello there and welcome. And if you can't tell, I'm here with Referro. Hello, Referro. Hello, Matt. And uh, what do you have the honor of being, Referro? I have the honor of being the last or uh, fan vote qualifiers, last uh, last qualifier for GCS2. That's this right. September. That's right. This September, I like it. You get in the promotional mindset. That's yep. good. <laughs> this One September. month. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> this guy, he battled long and hard, and that was recognized very well when all of you, people that had the eligibility to vote, in the huge fan vote we had, well, most of you voted for this guy. And uh, now I'm going to introduce you to him. I'm going to interview him, and uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about who is Referro. We're going to be asking ourselves that question. Uh, before we do that, the referral, if you can wait a moment, I actually have something else to announce, and that is the sure Benefactor thing. tournament. So these guys that donated $40, not only did they have the honor of voting you in to play in this prestigious tournament based on how well you'd performed, uh, they also have the honor of being able to sign up to play for this tournament, and 24 of them have done that. I think it's quite a scary thing to play in a one versus one tournament and they had to be ranked in auto match 1v1 so that limited the player pool a little tiny bit but uh, nevertheless these are our sign ups for you're seeing my screen. Um, let's have a little look at the seeding so this is all based on auto match uh, top allied and axis average and uh, we've got some interesting players. Do you, do you notice you do. anything Referro about the nationality of these I players? <laughs> I was just about to say I see a very strong NA vibe in the in the top four uh, <laughs> um, contenders, but uh, definitely recognize a lot of the names like from. Uh, I think yes. that the Benefactor tournament for GCS two is about as prestigious as NA ESL. If you remember that, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically NA ESL. Yes. Yeah, basically right. Yeah. <laughs> No, joking aside, these are all awesome guys. They've all pledged a crap ton of money to help make GCS2 happen, and they all have an excellent chance to participate and win Definitely. a GTX 1080. Do you, do you know about that card, um, Referro? Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's still to this day, like even two years after, I think it's two years now, it's still the high, one of the strongest GPUs, right? It's the, the strongest the except for yeah. the TI version, but it's still worth uh, $600, about £500. Uh, Boom, there we go. NVIDIA have delayed the release of their new card for a year because their current card is still a beast, quite frankly. Yeah, exactly. Um, now I've got one. I can play Witcher, 100 FPS. I can play Co at 20 FPS, which is amazing. No, I'm joking. Uh, like 60-odd. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's really good. We've got some awesome players here. Uh, Stone Tiger Gaddafi represent. He's playing. Um, Blue Dream, Legio IX Espana, Pompey, yeah. Puppet Master. Definitely a lot of uh, recognizable names in there. It's going to be good. And some and some newcomers as well. We haven't really seen much of. So if you want to know when this tournament is, it's this Sunday. So that is Sunday, the 19th of August. Um, it's going to be the same format as GCS2's qualifiers. So you have to turn up at, uh, after 1 o'clock BST. So that's uh, uh, 12 GMT to s check in. And then the tournament itself will launch at 2 BST. So exact same format. However, we are going to try and get it all done in one day. That's right. So we're probably, if it's going to be uh, 16 players plus, we might have a best of one first round. But then every uh, match after that will be best of three. We'll get it all done in one day. Um, and it's going to be awesome. I myself will be casting. I might have some guests. might even ask Referro uh, or anybody else who wants to has the moment uh, to join in and commentate on some of these cool games. Um, so that'll be good. Also, I'll just say this now, Referro. If we get two guys that are actually going to be at GCS2 in the final, I might just say, hang on, guys. Do you want to play this at the event if we can squeeze it in? Because we might be able to do that. <laughs> if it's like Momo or um, Tomikaze, well, both of them in the final, that is an option. Um, I mean, they're both coming, uh, coming to GCS, right? That's right, they are, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They both don donated a crap ton of money and they're flying over as well, so it's really cool. Um Anyway, Referro, now it's time for the second segment and uh, in AE and Referro's Co2 program. And that is an interview with your good self because I may have joked when I said, who are you? But genuinely, I've seen you streaming now and again. But as a player, you are on the tournament scene. You're a relative, and I mean relative, unknown. Would that be correct to say? Uh, I would actually uh, completely agree with you in that statement. Like relative unknown in the sense that I've I played actually in a lot of tournaments. These uh, even all, all the way back to OCF, I uh, I uh, I didn't 
get any good results, but I've been playing since then. And but I've never really made a name for myself, as you said. So this is definitely my my year and my my uh, my time to to show show people. So here we go. This is the open qualifiers for Operation Charlie Fox, the first crowd crowdfunded event in uh, Company Heroes history. So we're going to try and find Referro here. And it might take us a while because it's a big ass qualification tournament. Where's Waldo? <laughs> Where's Waldo? This is when he was in his early days. And uh, he wasn't the celebrity he's now becoming. Oh, let's. Uh, let's... There he is. He's Referro here. He's in the first round. Uh, he gets a bye, and then he's up against LT742. And then his bigger brother, Lieutenant Baumi. And you get to the second yeah. round of qualification for OCF back in 2015. And uh... That far, that far. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how far you've come and how mu much you progress as a player. Obviously, your auto-match ranks speak for themselves. You uh, enjoyed a very long stay at rank 1 in Brits for the majority of this year so far, which was pretty impressive. Um, I mean, just a bit about that. I mean, what what was it about Brits that decided to make you focus on them in the ladder? I think it was more of the the kind. There wasn't a lot of people playing Brits at the moment, and I saw it as a, like a, a spot where I could actually reach rank one and make it, maybe get some attention to myself, like break the the top ten, mm. get get to rank one. If you hold hold that for some time, people's gonna notice you. I also mm. think it's like when you go into Code2.org, Brits is the first one that shows up, like in the leaderboard, like the highlight of the leaderboard. Yeah. So, so I, I figured, like, I, if I can get Brits rank one, and it, as I said, it wasn't a faction that a lot of people played, so ah, I, I could be different from other people as well. Try Incredible. to meta breaker, if that's. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about cult of personality and fostering this uh, kind of this persona and trying to take over the world. When you decided to start with Brits. I, I definitely caught the attention of uh, Armstrong uh, by doing that excited. You so, did. So. It's like who's yeah, this he... younger Danish guy that's occupying number one on the Brits ladder? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's let's have a little look at um, how you did. Obviously, entering into GCS two. So at this point, I, I think you were seeded fourteenth. I want to say or something like that. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think you're right on that. Point. So I'm, I might have been like 13 first round because I think Isildur didn't play. Yeah, so you were you were seeded 14th, meaning you got the as you say Isildur didn't play, so yeah. you were 13 into this tournament. Um, you beat Creative Name, not a bad little start there. Um, but then of course you came up against Nagano, who's a monster, Gano. you know. Yeah, definitely hats off to that guy. Yeah, um, he's one of the still in one my I think he's in my top three three still of. Uh, Best co two players, and it's really sad to see him uh, not being able to compete in um you, you, in GCS. You did, this you did take him to a third and final game though, which is pretty impressive. Um, it, to highlight something that series, was first definitely the first game. It was a really uh, I think it was like one around one hour game back and forth. And, and did you win that as I managed to three uh, victory yeah. points remaining? Holy crap! I, I think I he called in like cast. seven P forty seven airstrikes on me, and I got like double panther or something. And in the end, I could over I overwhelmed his Jacksons and Shermans and and got him. But it was really it was a close one. Nice work. That's that's awesome. Um, so obviously we know that uh, over the course of these tournaments you're going to start to accumulate GCS points, but you're not quite there yet. Let's nope. see how you do in the second tournament. Um, first round Tobis, and then you go um, against. Uh, sorry, you've got Sedol something. You yeah, Sedolia, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's more Sedolia. Sorry. Go on. So tell, talk us through this series because uh, this was a f your first underdog victory of the tournament uh, system. So yeah, I've been playing Sedoli a couple of times, and I feel pretty even with him. Like we play really even in the matchup against each other. Sometimes he beats me, and sometimes I beat him. I I felt pretty confident in my Oster this this uh, round, and I got I think I got a pretty good good opener in the first game, and I I wiped this uh, squad early on, and and I put the pressure on. I also used mobile defense, so that helped me out quite a lot in terms of putting the pressure on. Um, and then I lost uh, lost again to him because he was he put really high pressure Okavi. Uh, OKW on my on, on my Soviets, and the last game I, I I pulled out. I can't remember the last game actually, but I just remember it was quite close as well. So I accidentally clicked uh, Referro versus Creative Name, and luckily for me, it was the exact same strat, <laughs> Mobile Defense. And here we go again, Mobile Defense. So uh, 
Yeah. Referral, I am I'm I'm here by giving you the AE pen of non meta usage. It's not quite as good as the Coco Jumbo <laughs> Award, but for, for sticking with mobile defense when nobody else would use it and for having the heart and the, the bravery, uh, I give you this pen. I'll give you that in September. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta do what you gotta do, man, and I fully respect that. And uh it's it's awesome to me that people are taking this game seriously and and doing and competing and winning like you are in this case against uh, and Sedolio in that second tournament. If I can say something uh, shortly, I, I've been getting a lot of comments on my opener, Suster. I see a lot of people still opening MG42, and I've been like, I've, I haven't been done doing that except one time I think against Hans in this entire uh, qualifier so far. And it, like it's like I prefer playing the more aggressive playstyle with double. Pioneer into three or four grands, like it leaves for much more mobility. It's interesting. So as, as we're seeing that here, yeah, exactly, and it's pretty fun because I've seen uh, like Loveness, Dev, M, Armstrong, all the other top players seems to even one Aston seems to play MG first, but I I just personally can't get it to work somehow. I did I did build it against Hans because he went Brits, and I feel like I could like deny him his fuel with it better, but. Normally, I wouldn't go for it. This is the purest in me. Um, I mean, Love Nest aside, a lot of these top guys aside, but uh, I, I noticed that there's a correlation between people that have been playing the series for a very long time and excellent MG42 usage. Uh, yeah, When exactly. did you start in this series? Uh, when you, sorry, in, in when the When did you start game? playing the series, the game, either of the games? I, I never actually, I'm, I, this may uh, hurt a lot of people, I never played Co 1. Okay. I only heard about it from, from friends and stuff, and I, I think I got into Co 2 and doing the beta. Right. And what, on release, like many people said, it was like really not a finished game, so I quickly dropped it out of a horrible campaign playthrough and <laughs> some horrible matches in auto match. I didn't really get into the game. But I, back in 2015, I think spring, I got into the game again, and I started watching... Uh, Twitch stream. I think I saw Stormless or Lenny back then, and I got a big interest in this game. Despite none of my friends actually wanted to play it with me. <laughs> there you go. But, you um, get to meet the celebrity that is Stormless yes. in September. The guy that got you into the game, <laughs> and Lenny. I'm gonna say that to him in the in as a joke during the castle. There's one streamer that was streaming 2015 that actually introduced uh, Referro to uh, this game, Dan. And exactly. I want to say that it was Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually give a heads up to Loveness, uh, to, sorry, to Stormless because he I, he streamed a lot back in 2015, he I did, think. Yeah. Like, uh, and and like I definitely thought he had a lot of good content back then. He was definitely a lot better player than I was at that point. <laughs> so um, so um, but yeah, I've been playing this competitively since back OCF. So like so two that, and a half. That, that comes back know, to my point years. then. The MG42 is such a situational weapon that you need mastery of uh, like. Yeah, need to feel like you're one with the MG42 and you've lived with it and you know how to use it in exactly. every situation. But that's not to say like a great player such as yourself can't make uh, a non-MG42 start work and you, you clearly have done excellently in many of these games. Um, and then, of course, you, you do fall to Love Nest. Yes. And the the short version of the that series or at both series for that matter I can say is that I feel like Lobnus just had that he has that ten percent over me like in the small smaller fights engagement he always has that slight micro edge or mm. better game sense I feel like so he's been like slowly like it's like like um slowly like like he's uh, what is it called like he's uh, choking me out of the game like slowly like I feel like I'm still in it but he's like slowly pushing me further and further back. And that's just like how Loftness also plays. Like he takes slowly control of the map, and then he just dominates you. Yep. But I definitely feel like I had some shots, especially in the second game of the first series. I could have come back because I killed like his Panther or Boomer or something, but I just ran out of v VP sadly. And we'll be coming back to this guy a little bit later on in the interview. Um, but thirdly, with the tournaments, let's go on to how you did in the third tournament. Uh, we start off against Whoopi, and then you beat Bart and PL. Let's have a yeah. little look at that game. So p people would definitely remember at least the second game of the Barton <laughs> matchup because that's uh, what I got the Coco Jambo award for for playing my ML twenty against his uh, OKV with a uh, I, I think I built it pretty early in the game, and I I used it for twenty minutes to hit his tier four to much uh, ineffectiveness, but <laughs> it ended up well with him doing a. Quite aggressive tank push to my base, and resulting in me killing all his tanks. And 
sealing the game pretty much. I do believe we captured a little bit of that on uh, camera. You, you got to... Yeah, and no, he stole my T34 uh, as well from Abandon. I didn't even notice it until he had it, like, full health. But yeah, then he decides to, like, as you see here, like, ramps my base. I don't have any AT other than the Raketten, Raketten retreating. And there it is, and the famous ML20. There it is. So not and only it, did I think you it... get an ironic uh, taking the piss uh, non-metro, you got the real thing for an incredible play with a Soviets against Barton. Um, so that, that was pretty cool cool way to start tournament three then again you came up against loveness yes exactly and same same story goes i actually he got the map pick again and i think he w thought he would pick famonville once again because mm. uh i i sadly talked with him about this and I've, i i maybe shouldn't see it say this but famonville has been a map i've been struggling a lot with but i'm definitely practicing a lot more with it, like on it to get more practice on it yeah and i think it's definitely better with the new version of it uh compared to the old one Mm. Um, but yeah, he picked crossing and he, um, that's when I got introduced to, uh, tank hunters actually, because I think, ta like tank hunter tactics, he used that against me in the first game. And that really caught me by surprise because I hadn't seen anybody use it in competitive play since like, like forever and pretty much. And yeah. It makes me think that that's his kind of qualification strat, you know, and he wants to make people think he's going to use that for GCS2, and then he'll go back to sniper, to gu guards, and guards or something, and yeah. penals, and oh, I love the mind games, I love them, and they're going to get better and better, Referro. Um, exactly. So, but it's basically the same story. He had that 10% H edge over me the whole whole series, and slowly pushed me out. So um, let's have a little think about your position after this tournament, because I think on points you had a lot. But you weren't, unless you did something really good, um, it didn't look likely that you'd get into contention yeah. to qualify or get into those even those voting places to uh, get in. So talk us through your mindset going into this fourth tournament. Were you just still really confident that you could make something happen? Uh, did you think there's maybe something that could go your way? What was your feelings before the fourth tournament? So basically, right after the third uh, tournament, I was kind of bummed again because I was disappointed in my performance in terms of losing to Loveness the same way in this like. And I think at that point, Logano wasn't like he wasn't uh, out of the tournament at that point, right? Mm. He was still in, and and the, how the the people like the people who won the quarterfinals that we uh, for the f third qualifier was like the worst people who could have done it in terms of was Stu and Kimbo. Yeah. Which both per people uh, they both had less points than me at that point, but then they result they would have gotten more gotten yeah. more points. Uh, so I was actually it's like, damn, I'm gonna get kicked down to like sixth or seventh place now, and I'm, I've only a shot of hitting like the bottom fan vote if I'm lucky. Yeah. And, and then of course, then the unfortunate events happened with Nagano, um I Sadly, had to drop and. Stuve and Kimbo drama. I don't. I don't want to get into it. But yeah. basically, it was pretty fortunate in from in my case because I, I, I my points were still there and their points were then out of the system. And so, when Aston got, yeah, sorry. So the short of it is there is um, fortunately, obviously, for for Referro, but unfortunately yeah. for for I guess Nagano and Kimbo is that they couldn't play in GCS two anymore. One for visa issues and for one for for trolling and Twitch and stuff. But yeah, you know, for every person that dis, you know, is down on their luck, there's always opportunity. And I think I have to say that the the field of competitive players for GCS two is probably the strongest it's ever been in the Company Heroes franchise history. And I've been following it uh, for a very long agree. time, for a very long time. You... Um, so you you had an opportunity granted to you, and let's see how you seized that opportunity because you must have done, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And uh, let's have a little look at the fourth qualification tournament and have a look at your journey through that. As you came up against ICAB in your first match, let's have a little think uh, talk about that then. So yeah, against this ma uh, this matchup, I felt was um, at one I would win most of the time if I just played my my standard my best game and. Uh, he played pick Brits, I think, just to try to. I don't know if he picked Brits into like mock me with my Brits because I hadn't played him much that tournament or anything. But he played uh, quite well actually. But I def I definitely just outshine him with the superior. Like uh, Oster has so many tools that counters Brits, so I I, I would say I like, took advantage of that. The second the second game, I actually used the tank counters tactics. I uh, I used the uh, inspiration from Loveness, and it worked out to great effect in shutting down his uh, looks and tier three pushes. Um, 
and yeah definitely just again slowly pushed him off the map and got the series sealed moved on to the next um this was also a week with fewer games since we didn't have to play the, i didn't have to play the first round yeah that's which, right i think a lot of people gave up on trying to qualify yeah the, the hardcore people did kept on there things like 24 people in this tournament um but like you know a good 10 people that could have played were like you know what I'll just watch. <laughs> I, I still got to say, though, in terms of fatigue, that can play a big factor into these, like, like these, just even though it's only three series you're going to play, like, me having to skip the first one means that I'm more ready and fresh to to play my, my second and third series, or first and second, that is. You, you come up against somebody here that's had just as much break as you, and he's back from the dead. It's Stoof. Yes. And uh, this, I believe, was a hell of a series, and... We'll probably have a little chance to catch some of it to right now because um, typed, sorry, Imperial Dane cast some of it. So uh, this is a big shout out to Imperial Dane. I'm sure all of you know him. We're going to broadcast a little bit of his clip here. Um, and Referro, just just talk us through what uh, what happens in the in this moment, please. So basically, in this moment, uh, Stuve decided to dive my Katusha since it wasn't covered by AT guns or any mines. And he, he after a couple of misses, he seems to get it, but it, of course, it abandons, and he he missed it as he missed it again a couple of times after. I think two times again, and I think Stuve got pretty uh, annoyed at this point after three misses and talking about this game being esports ready. But then I decided to give him a little break, and after I repair the Katusha, I I drive it. Um, yeah, see here he also rams in with his panther and <laughs> dives with it and loses it in the process. Like he was really uh, tr tilted after that, which I could could understand. But being the the gentleman I, I am, I I said no, I didn't. Sorry, I I play competitively and I made a micro mistake in in terms of putting the sorry. The yeah, forward. I'm just gonna. There it is. It pops up back up here. You can see on the top left of your screen, everybody. He's, he's repaired the katusha. He's rammed yeah. it. And if you can see on the minimap, let me get onto the uh, see on the minimap. There's something journeying into the center of the map due to a misclick right now. Let's have a little look. I think it pops up in a moment. I want to hear what Imperial Dane has to say about this. Actually, <laughs> yeah, see there, I, I do a quick misclick and then and I was like, whoops, that that wasn't the plan. <laughs> but you, you do manage to win this game. You manage to um to, to get the yeah. W. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Uh, if you, yeah, go so, back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's, a, there's a pretty. No, it's it doesn't. Yeah, he ramps my. He dives my T34, and I get to ram it, and then my pizza bombs it. Uh, oh, here we go. All right. Yeah, it's pretty funny as well because my T34 actually survives this encounter, and this it's just the cherry on the, on top of the ice cream in terms of a uh, putting a stew in the major tilt. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> oh, the ram combo with the pizza. And you and you're thinking like, oh, the T34 is dead here. Nope. <laughs> Holy shit. You basically had the luckiest game ever, basically. Yeah. Let, let me, I, you're clearly an excellent player and everything, but uh, dude, you sometimes had a sort of look in that game. That was a I good did. one. <laughs> um, but obviously, <laughs> you know, that was just one game there. You won the series hands down. Um, I second game was a car, kind of hard start, but I managed to call back with mobile fen mobile defense once again, and I got his uh, Persian kill. Excellent work. And then, of course, you came up against a rejuvenated Helping Hands that uh, suddenly became like 2016 Helping Hands again for, for a day, and it was incredibly impressive. Uh, hopefully he definitely he did. He continues that, because uh, if he can keep in this form, he'll have a good chance at winning GCS2, quite frankly. Um so Definitely see. hats off to Hans. He played a really good series that there. He did. I think I had the uh, fortune of seeing this one. And uh, I mean, talk us through the difference in this final game. What what did Helping Hans? Was there an edge that he had this day that you couldn't compete with, or was there any mistakes you made? I, I definitely think the third game was the the best one of the series because it was the closest in terms of uh, how equal we were through yep. the game. I, I would say I had the the edge for the first 30 minutes maybe because I had some good sniper micro in the the first uh, half of the game. But after he got the Pershing out, like you, I think you, I, I heard some of the, you saying on the VOD, once the Pershing gets out, you, it's not your objective to control the VPs or the resources. Your objective is to 
to kill that Pershing before yeah. it hits Vet 3. It's true. I, I, you couldn't have said it any better because once it hits Vet 3 it, and it comes up to 50 model kills, it's you're, like... You're on a ticking time because it will hit yeah. Vet 3 and if you don't stop it, you are going to lose the game. Um, if, and... You know, uh, that's that's it. That's what I used to tell Aimstrong. I, we're, um, you know, I could probably speak quite freely about this now, but I'm a good friend of Aimstrong's. I've always spoken to that guy and uh, I sat with him in Steam uh, watching his games and there's a game he had against uh, Von Lutzau and Von Lutzau wins due to a Vet3 Pershing and I was like, Simon, just kill the Pershing. You don't worry about VPs. What are you doing, man? Uh, so that's where that meme came from. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. So, but I would, maybe there is some stuff, uh, some, some decisions I could have made better in that game, but I definitely say it's uh, it was a pretty equal match game, and Hans just got the better of me in the end. So hats off to him and, and well played. He, um, I think, in the end, qualified for GCS two on he outright. Did. But let's talk a little bit of what happened next because you gained a crap ton of points in, uh, in in the tournaments. They all accumulated, and you ended up in a really good position after for consistent performance, really consistent performance. So. Uh, the players were given, sorry, the fans were given the option to vote on the following criteria. Um, please base your decision on opinion of skill shown in GCS2 tournament combat, competitive spirit and courage shown on the battlefield, and the most deserved player at the finals based on how well they fought. So obviously I voted for Aimstrong because I'm his friend. <laughs> friend? <laughs> so I, I listened to my own, per personal my own criteria. Preference. I was like, hmm. <laughs> yes, I, I forgot to write the fourth criteria. <laughs> Organizers not not included. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think everybody in general, I think uh, it was clear who, if most people based on that criteria, and even if you were just based on likability, one person won no matter what the criteria was, and it was pretty profound. Uh, I think it's 45 out of, what's, how many is that? I think I've calculated this before. Uh, 20 at 10, 45 divided by 75. That's a lot. 60% of the vote, which is uh, a, a huge majority. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. You're now the people's so, champion going into GCS2. <laughs> I was uh, like, I, I had a pretty good feeling about the vote, but still like you can never, you can never know. So I was super uh, like that night. I, I, I don't know if I, I could sleep, of course, but I was like super hyped in terms of the, the vote. I, I, want, I wanted the result like right now. Um, and I talked to a lot of people and they were like encouraging me, like in terms of you, you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm, because I was, of course, after like I played that Sunday in the, in the semifinals and the third mm -hmm. game. And I, I was really disappointed again because it was in my hands to make me qualify on my own. And I lost to Hans, meaning that he could now take my spot for the seventh seat, uh, seventh qualifier seat. Oh God, seat. we haven't even spoken about that. You're, you're absolutely right. This yeah. is the... The time when, of course, you know, in that th that third place playoff, if you'd won that, it would have been helping hands in the vote. So that's, exactly. that's, a, that's a big one to talk about. And I think Referro, I mean, I think it's easy to say on paper that out of all the players, uh, you are the one that's been given an opportunity. You've deserved yes. the opportunity, but the guys above you are on paper. This is the we're getting we're getting into the seeding now. So that's that, why we got seeds, right? Exactly, so exactly. So that's this is now we've got very clear uh, a ranking of who's beating whom and uh, where they rank against each other. So this is the seeds going into GCS two. I was originally thinking this will be provisional, but to be honest, my confidence in it has grown. <clears throat> and I'm I'm super happy with it. I think the players um, know where they stand now, and I think going into this tournament, it's really good that everybody's got an idea of who they might be up against. Yeah. So this is your place in it all, referrer. You seed seven, just pipping out uh, Jesse Lynn, and that means it, due to our double elimination uh, tournament situation, um, let's have a little look at. Yeah, that's the right screen. Just double checking. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So. This is how the brackets will look. Of course, they'll be super fancy. They'll be in GCS2.org. Poor Jan has got to code all this stuff. It's like I'm just <laughs> this mad scientist and Jan's the engineer, basically. I'm like, Jan, I've made some brackets. Put them in the <laughs> website. And he's got to go away and do it <laughs> with actual science and actual numbers. Um, anyway, so oh, you would be up against Love Nest Referro, somebody that uh, you know has beaten you twice in GCS2 twice already. competition already. But you don't seem like you're scared of him. You seem like you're probably well, the one person that's got a really good base to prepare on. 
I got the most inside knowledge in terms of the matchup, you could say, or third time's the charm you could also get, bring. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm definitely looking to uh, get a lot of practice in this coming month before GCS, and and I'm going to be ready for uh, because there's a reason that we're like the top eight players in this tournament. We're supposed to be able to beat everybody like if you want to win you, you're supposed to be able to beat everybody exactly. i think that's the mentality i heard a lot from jesselin like that's why he didn't care about much about his seat i talked with jesselin about and so he was fine like having devon because i'm gonna have to meet him anyway at some point if i want to win jesselin like, was super cool about that actually I, yeah I exactly he's the only person i gave a heads up i said listen i've done some analysis of the win losses and you might be seeing ace i don't care <laughs> he just didn't care he was yeah. like i don't care you mate you might be seed eight yeah good <laughs> he just didn't care right? in a spanish accent though of course um so yeah um so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to this and i know i'm gonna get some great games because the loveness team i think he's like you we can i don't know if, but we I, I want to uh like i can think i can say this in terms of he hasn't shown his best form in the first couple of qualifiers and I think a lot of people are going to agree and with me on that. That's why he's been banned for deliberately underperforming. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, after he was a couple of like coasting, you know, he was just like warming up his engines, like, oh yeah, this exactly. is how I play tennis, you know. Oh, sorry, come here, would... you know. He's like... <laughs> right. But I would say that the like the, the the giant is back from his slumber. Like he's um he's I've been screaming this past couple of weeks, and he's definitely looking much better than he did the first couple of weeks in in the qualifiers. Like in terms of cons consistency, wow. as I've highlighted, is one of his strong sides. But you've got two other guys that have not been there and done it before either, quite frankly. I mean, I know no talisman has been in finals before, but he's never won one. Same with Von Aston. Yeah. Uh, you, th you three guys here are the three guys in this tournament out of the eight that have never won a big tournament before. Um, so it, it's super exciting for me to see three out of the eight on, on you know, household names that have won a tournament before. They're, they're, you know, that you know, that makes sense. So it's it's pretty cool. I'm really happy with the lineup as an organizer. I'm super yeah. happy to have you come over to Manchester and be our guest and uh, bring your bring your A game. I think it's going to be a total blast. Definitely. Um, we'll just ask some some quick questions uh, now of referral yourself. Just a few. Uh, personal questions, I guess, just so people have a little bit more flavor of the person you are. Uh, what's your second favorite game to play after coming to Heroes? Second favorite game? Uh, in term, is it just all yeah, games? Like or... at the moment, like what are you playing? Uh, at the moment, I play a lot of. Um... I don't even know. I, like I've always been the kind of people, person who play like so many different games, but I definitely like, enjoy a lot of a uh, Battlefield with my friends. Yeah, Battlefield One, Battlefield Four. Um... But I also play MOBAs, like both League and oh, Heroes. Dear. Okay, that's nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, so no, so yeah, right? I know, I know. Let's, <laughs> let's get on with it. <laughs> what's your Twitch stream? I believe you've got a Twitch stream. What's the address yeah. for that? Uh, it's uh, Referro. I think it's uh, like R and then a three for the, the E and then like Referro spelled with a three and instead you, of the three. You do sometimes stream yourself. You stream a few games yeah. again, don't you? Yeah, I've been when I have time in between my studies and, and work. So uh, what do you do for studies and work, uh, if you're willing to say? Yeah, sure. Uh, I've been. Uh, I'm a third year bachelor student. I'm actually finishing up my last exams. Uh, I'm. I. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a. Ma ah, sorry. I'm a business student in terms of uh, international business, and I've in my third year of uh, bachelor. So I'm, I'm finishing up my university first degree. Every, everybody's super clever. Uh, it, it, coming <laughs> here as it seems, everybody's got like two degrees and whatever. Um, but anyway, there was a few little flirty questions there. But in re in general, Referro, uh, it's been a pleasure having you in the, the, the system. And it's awesome seeing you qualify. And I'm very excited thank to see you. how you do in GCS2. Um, so thank you. And uh, goodbye to all of you for tuning in. See you this Sunday on twitch.tv forward slash AECOH to watch the Benefactor tournament streamed live. And um, you'll be seeing Referro and myself in September for GCS2. See you there.